Hi everyone, welcome to a special live event celebrating the new Hallmark Channel series, The Way Home. I'm Dory Jackson from People Magazine, and I'm so excited to be here with you and some of the stars of this all new series. So please help me welcome Kyler Lee, who plays Kat, and Evan Williams, who plays Elliot. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hop right in. Let's talk about the episode that just aired. Kyler, you were so looking forward to the series premiere. How do you feel now that the first few episodes are out there? Um, it's it's pretty surreal. I think, you know, it, there are filming and the whole process was pretty fast and furious. So for us, it was like so much jam packed into this amount of time. Um, and, uh, I'm so happy with everything that we've done. I think the episodes are coming out so beautiful. I mean, exactly the way that we kind of envisioned them, um, where it's got more of that cinematic feel to it. Um, and there's a bit of that edge. And so, I mean, since it's come out, I have had so many people just e express how, you know, much they love the show. And even if it was like, you know, I, I never thought I'd be watching Hallmark or, you know, I sat down to watch this with my wife and oh my gosh, I really love it. And like, you hear all these wonderful, you know, comments and, and it makes me feel so blessed and so honored to have been part of something that we're just incredibly passionate about. I love that. So this one is for both of you. What's one of the best responses about the show that you've heard so far? Uh, Go ahead. Well, my, my my favorite is some version of somebody saying that they didn't think they would be into it and now they're hooked. And especially uh, my husband never watched his Hallmark and now he did like he didn't think he was going to like it. And now he's absolutely hooked. I love the crossovers. There's, there's a tweet that I retweeted recently where a guy said, uh, I'm supposed to watch NASCAR, but the way home is on. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had someone had told me and I'm trying to remember who, uh, who it was, but I think there's like this podcast of these three men who are like WWE or WWF. I don't know what we call it anymore. Um, like ex wrestler guys that absolutely no, I... like they go through and they like review all of these Hallmark shows and like they love the way home. And I was what? like, what? what? I have to research this and look into it because, I mean, I I want to talk to them. That's Before. amazing. Look at the crossover. Well, yeah. We have seen that Elliot is willing to do just about anything to help the Landry's at any time. Just when about. we left Kat and Elliot at the end of the last episode, Kat learns Elliot's been keeping a secret. What was that like for Kat to discover? Um... I mean, there's a sense of almost like a a betrayal of, of their friendship, you know, um, even though they had been part apart like all these years, there's still that side of when they were so close when, you know, growing up together and the dynamic between the two of them was so like just intense, like they love each other. And the fact that, you know, he has been hiding this thing the whole time and that is that he's been in on it with her daughter, like kind of putting all these pieces back together. It's like, what the heck, dude? Like, how could you how could I be the one? How could it be me that I'm the one who doesn't know what's going on when we know virtually everything about each other? <laughs> pretty she's pretty mad. She's pretty mad. I got to hit him in that scene when when she kind of confronts him. I hit him so many times. This is great. And every single time, it got a little bit harder. Every take, like it oh, started no. off as like a little I was little tap. Really, I was in the moment. I think yeah, I, I was any in the bruises? moment. Did you get any bruises afterward? <laughs> no, no, nothing external. Not too hard. Okay, not too hard. <laughs> well, and Evan, what's it like being the guy on the inside with all this? Well, it, it's really interesting. First of all, just from a like a, a, an acting point of view, it's it's a fun challenge to be sort of the the male energy that is ping-ponging around these strong women characters and i think for elliot uh he didn't have a choice right like it just sort of landed in his lap and he's been doing his very best his whole life like ever since that moment happened to try to handle the situation which is a mind-blowing improbable impossible situation and so i think he probably knew that um, if Kat ever found out it was going to be a problem, but he 
also didn't really have a choice. And so that that's a, I, I think it's it's interesting that we see Elliot stand up a little bit at the end of episode four and kind of grow a spine because uh, I, people can only take so much and love isn't always expressed as uh, a deference. You know, like sometimes sometimes love has to be tough. Absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm glad that Elliot got a chance to, to do that. Yeah. Well, I think she responded. Yeah. If I do say so myself, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so we do have to talk about that calf birthing scene. First of all, was there someone on set with experience to walk you through what that was really like? And have you seen a calf being born before? Or did you watch YouTube videos or something like that? Well, I, I'm, I'm from the prairies in Canada in Alberta. Okay. And so uh, I grew up sort of not far from a lot of calf birthing, but I was never present. I, I was definitely never present and I did a lot of YouTube researching and okay. there definitely was somebody who was there, who was the yeah. the wrangler, who, who actually had a very loving relationship with uh, both the, the adult cow and the calf. And Aww. so we felt like we were in really good hands. And surprisingly, another expert we had was Andy McDowell. Wow. Like she she was okay. like, she's like, oh no, this wouldn't have been like this. And we could, we're gonna have to do this and, and it's gonna have to be this way. And we, we, I was totally into it. I was totally happy to, to have her be the, to be the, uh, the voice of experience because she, she is the kind of actor who cares about the truth of the moment too. And she really oh, wanted it totally to be right. able to be, to be believable and to read. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was a chaotic day. As soon as you have uh, thunder and lightning and rain, all of a sudden the whole thing is amped up and we were in this barn where uh, Kyle, you remember the, 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 the air in the barn was thick with, mm. uh, I yeah. guess, particulate. Yeah. And it was, uh, uh, I think, uh, dense. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a dense, it was dense in every way. Mm. And, uh, but, but I think it was one of those scenes where the chaos kind of brought the, brought the cast together. And uh, those are also the days that are really fun to play where you're doing something like, especially with live animals, especially live animals that are the size of a small car. Uh, yeah. it, it just sort of, uh, the chaos bonds us. And I'm glad that some of that made it into the, into the show as well. Yeah. I just love that Andy was the expert in all that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, if, if, yeah. if Andy McDowell tells you to do something, you do it. Oh, yeah. you do it. And you do it with a <laughs> smile. And you do, you smile. You smile. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not even a not even a forced smile. She makes you smile. She's so charismatic and so yeah. like I like I know you have to feel the same way, Kyla. Like oh, we're yeah. so blessed to be sharing the screen with Andy McDowell. She's such a such a cool, timeless presence, and she's also like the most alive of anybody that age that I know. She is just like, bam! She's like beaming all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Tangent. So Kyler, Cat followed Alice in the last episode and ended up in the nineties. How have your swims in the pond been? What's that like to shoot? And have you done anything like that before? Um, so the water is like <laughs> super cold. Um, I only actually had to go like in the, in the actual pond. I only had to like be submerged one time. Okay, um, it was one day. It was a few times that we did it. It, it was like breathtakingly cold. Oh, uh, and this was even in... I'm trying to remember when we filmed it, like maybe September, October or something like that. Um, and it, yeah, it was surprisingly cold. Um, so kudos to Sadie and also our stunts department, like for how many times they went into the water. Like, I mean, it, it was amazing. And the, but, I mean, the pond is beautiful in and of itself, mm -hmm. but when you're seeing all the little, little guys just swimming right by you, you're kind of like, hmm, what was that? <laughs> but actually, the uh, the underwater stuff that we did, that Sadie and I did, was actually um, Tom Best, who is our DP. Uh, mm -hmm. It was in his pool. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Awesome. So at his home, in his pool, he, like, tented and blacked out the entire thing. And so everything that you see underwater is actually, like, tents and, like, tarp. Mm -hmm. I should say, okay. um, and then brought in like all these like plants and, and whatnot. We had scuba divers under there too, in case obviously for liability, you have to make sure that we have sure. people there, but um, it was wild. Like uh, Sadie and I had such a blast. And of course me, I was like overbearing, overprotective mom. Every time she came up from the water, I'm like, do you need a tissue, sweetie? She's coughing, she's coughing, <laughs> get some water. Like, I don't know why I have an accent. <laughs> but, um, 
No, it was. It was <laughs> she did. She, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, mm-hmm. The only time I've ever done like underwater stuff, like even close to that was on Supergirl. I had an underwater tank scene. And so I felt comfortable kind of knowing that no matter what, we were going to be safe um, and to just like, just go for it. Yeah. Well, we know Sadie had been doing this a bit longer for a few weeks before you had. So before getting in and doing it yourself, did she offer you any pointers? It's cold. (laughs) That's like the best I got. (laughs) It's cold. Yeah. She's like, this is a warning. It's gonna be you. fun. <laughs> <It's> cool. Cool. <laughs> well, Evan, we've seen Elliot at school and the Landry farm. Will we get to see more of his home later in the season? I hope so. I, I, I mean, I hope so. I think that uh, it'd be really cool to see Elliot's uh, internal life spread into a space. I think uh, sets are really cool because it's like another a whole nother dimension to the character that is collaborated by all the people that are making it. So I think if the audience gets to see Elliot's house, I think we would learn a lot. Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, we've had the teens in the hot seat in our last live, and I'm honestly still very shook by how much Alex looks like you, Kyler. What did you think when you first met or saw her? Yeah, no, it totally tripped me out. Um, yeah. She is just, She's a wonderful, wonderful, you know, woman. Like, honestly, she's so sincere, so smart, so funny. Um, and her smile truly, like, lights up a room. She's oh. fantastic. Um, and, you know, when when we first talked about everything, uh, to be honest, I was kind of like, I don't even know Kat. Like, I, don't, I haven't walked in Kat's shoes yet. Mm. And so there was a sense of that where I was kind of like, okay, you know, almost like because the characters are so different, um, it was like, you know, why don't you kind of like take some, some liberty here to see what a fun, like just show off what a fun cat would look like as a teen and the dynamic between, um, Alex and David, just fantastic. They're just lovely. Um, but it, it was, it was awesome to be able to trust her with that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, a hundred percent did. And anytime I got to see any of like the dailies or anything that I got to see with her, I was just like, oh my God, okay, she's fantastic. And the chemistry yeah. between Alex and Sadie oh, is so just, I got, yeah, it's, they're so wonderful together. Mm-hmm. Well, I have to ask Evan, what was it like when you first met David Webster? I think he's just the sweetest guy. Like, and, and he, his reputation preceded him. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to love David. He's he's the nicest. And it's true. He is. So like, we share a Canadian thing, you know, uh, uh, but okay. even more so than I ever was. He's just so, he's just a little golden little nugget of a person. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> like, he's the kind of guy that you just want to like, I don't know, give him an ice cream cone or something and be like, you're great. Give him a thumbs up. Uh, yeah, kid. <laughs> yeah. And a, a show like this where you have a whole younger cast is it's a huge risk. And especially the way that we ended up shooting it. Um, I mean, there were some some limitations and things and we, it wasn't the kind of thing where we could just all get together and get to know each other a ton before we shot. shot. So there's yeah. a certain amount of kismet involved, I think. Like uh, we just really lucked out that not only are the young cast such good performers and such good matches, but they're also just lovely people. Like Kyla and I were saying all all along from top to bottom, like there's no bad apples in this show. Everybody has been lovely. And uh, I think meeting David was mm-hmm. really was really fascinating because he's also an artist. Like, and we, we kind of, once the niceties were over, we got right down to business trying to figure out how we were going to kind of team tell this story. Okay. Well, David did say that you two spent some time discussing Elliot's reactions to things mm-hmm. and mannerisms. What were those conversations like? And can you show us any of those conversations? <laughs> well, we had a, we had we had a few zooms, and okay. uh, because you know he I was down in LA and he was up in Canada, and uh, what we wanted to do was try to tell in a physical way the story of somebody who has been in a way separated from their true. Uh, like future or their volition and he's Elliot's a bit of an outsider and so it was nice that you know he wears these glasses which is one layer of uh, uh, separation and so there's some relationship to the glasses that we worked on um, mm-hmm. also some relationship to the body um, and uh, also we uh, we discussed sort of if 
I, a lot of uh, the way that I like to work as an actor sometimes is to choose uh, an animal that I'm going to use as the base okay. of, of kind of my my performance. And so David and I discussed that, and he, uh, you know, he he went to theater school too, so he it wasn't weird to him. He was like, "Hey, great, let's go." And so uh, I I I kind of chose for Elliot the uh, and this is like this is usually behind the scenes stuff. This is not usually stuff you tell, so maybe uh, well, I tell you what. Why don't very, I just put it very careful right now because you have not said this to me. Really? <laughs> Be very careful because guess what's going to show up at your door? Whatever right. you say right now. All go sorts ahead. of all sorts of memes and such. <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's waiting for it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I basically for this animal, um, I like the idea of like a peregrine falcon. Because he's like, uh, and I, so I, and I was like looking at, and I, I did a tons of research. I got all these images on my phone and stuff, and and used that to uh, um, motivate the the m movement of the character and sort of the energy centers of the character, and also the idea that a, a bird is someone who is like not necessarily fluid, mm -hmm. and also is observing from a long way away, and it's the whole the whole thing is about sight. And for Elliot, there's a lot of um, a lot of layers there as far as like what he can see and can't see and what does he see that other people don't see and mm -hmm. uh, what does he have to sacrifice in order to be able to see those things and so uh, and that just kind of fired a little poetic metaphor in my head and so uh, David took to that and so we kind of started there and used that as the as the building blocks for for Elliot together. Okay well Kyler <laughs> 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 well, Kyler, Alex made an interesting point that you guys didn't really have those conversations because young cat and present day cat are so very different. So what do you see as some of those biggest differences between them? I think the sense of um, freedom and intention that a young cat had yeah. um, <laughs> just because she was at a point where she's figuring everything out. She's passionate. She's vibrant. She's like excited about life and what's next. And, you know, she has all these curiosities, obviously wants to go into journalism. Mm -hmm. um, and you see like the joyful side of her life and what it looks like, you know, when you go back to 99 and she's there with, with Colton and Dell and Jacob, and they're in that like beautiful golden environment. Yeah. It really was just like, and again, kudos to Tom Best who just unbelievably like lit everything just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so really differentiated. And I think that played such a key character actually in the show mm -hmm. was that difference yeah. between the both. Um, so it was, it was fun to watch her just come alive, you know, when she's in 99 and because it is such a long time in between and, you know, you don't really get to see too much into like why Kat, you know, was really, really fired or what really was the downfall between she and Brady, um, which you learn later in the season. Um, so it, it is like a. I guess opposite side of the coin, but there's still yeah. a familiarity to it as well because they're there. You start to see cat come a little bit more alive. The older cat, um, as she gets a bit more inquisitive about really what happened, like the mystery behind what happened with Jacob and being yeah. back in, you know, in 2023 at the farm, it really, she starts to see a lot of things that she's putting pieces together. And as she and Elliot kind of like, not mend fences, but can kind of move forward with where they're at. There's a lot that you see the in investigative side of her kind of come alive. So yeah. it's almost like you can kind of tie it back to Teen Cat in mm -hmm. some ways. So it's almost a little bit backwards, I guess, in a sense. <laughs> but yeah. she did a beautiful job again. Like I was super, super, super proud of her. Totally. Well, one thing that's so fun about this show is there's so many 90s music references. So like it's Limp Biscuit versus Dave Matthews fan, Brittany versus Christina. Let's discuss where do you guys stand? <laughs> uh, um, in those particular um, examples? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay well, go ahead, Evan. It's let's start from the beginning. What was the, what was the first one? Limp Biscuit versus Dave Matthews fan. I mean, that, that speaks for itself, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm Dave Matthews man all the way. What about you, Tyler? Yeah. <laughs> I would go, I, it depends on what year in high school we're talking about. Um, fair, fair, fair. 
I mean, are we talking about at the time or now? Dealer's That's choice. the point. We'll go. We'll go with Dave Matthews. Nice. Safe. 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 Brandy I did get to see him enough. perform, and he's an unbelievable musician. Like oh, phenomenal. Wow. It's my. It's mind blowing. Like really, truly, how incredibly talented he is. Oh, wow. No, that's like one of those bucket list ones. You have to see once. In Red Rocks, yeah. What was next? Oh, Britney or Christina. That's a hard one, too. They're so different. I think Christina is a better singer, to be honest. But I I like Britney's songs better. That's how I think most people feel. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Well, what are some essential 90s songs or bands you hope to hear on the show at some point? Well, I'm kind of like a sort of a, a 90s alternative rock kind of girl. Okay. Um, so me too, anything me too. Soundgarden, anything Temple of the Dog, Eddie Vedder, I mean, that kind of stuff, uh, I would definitely go for. Um, Chris Cornell, I mean, Ugh, iconic. <laughs> you know, the voice and everything and just being a genuinely wonderful human being. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, that's kind of like where, where I would come from personally yeah when i in the 90s i i actually i started off uh in my music viewership listenership as a as a fan of punk rock uh yes. which obviously you can you can tell obviously i mean right <laughs> uh so uh, uh but like there's a lot of a lot of early 90s punk rock that i that i love that i know will never make it into this show uh, but I went, I went actually down the rabbit hole because I made myself a little playlist of 90s songs before we started shooting, and then I got into it. And so I think I have a playlist of like over 150 songs from the 90s. And I think one that I think could make it in, I used to love a band called Bush X, which became Bush. Okay. And uh, they had this song called Glycerin, which I think of is like, course. I just loved that song. It's just four of chords, course. but uh, but it's one of those ones that like lives right here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I think I think uh, Kyle and I have similar similar music tastes. Well, here's Swishlu. Thank you for that one, though. But can you tease any other '90s pop culture touchstones we'll be seeing in coming episodes? Hmm. I don't want to don't give anything away. I know. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that's really fun to watch, and and this wouldn't be a giveaway, is just the 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 fashion, um, yeah. particularly from. Um, team cat, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how that influences um, Alice, you know, and so like how she gets to play dress up and she's like, I, I think that is so fun. Like just the little outfits and the ones that you go, oh, I did that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, are there any of these 90s pop culture touchstones that you guys feel sentimental about when seeing them on the show? I think the 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 set dressers mm-hmm. and the wardrobe department really got to uh, put their hearts into it, and it's all these little tiny little touches that you the camera sort of pans by them, and and you wouldn't notice unless you were going frame by frame. But that's also the kind yeah. of uh, kind of the craftsmanship and that devotion that's gone, gone into creating the show is like people yeah. are going through it frame by frame to make it to make sure that it's that it's uh, like legit. Yeah, to make sure that's legit, and and so to me, the the feeling that's created is it's like a pocket, a pocket of nostalgia mm-hmm. that when I watch it, I just like, I just like sit back into it, and it's really like, a, um, it's like delicious. It feels nutritious to me because we're we're looking at it through such a like e- even literally we're looking at it through a gilded lens, like the lens that mm-hmm. we're looking at it is is uh, you know the saturation pops and it's got this got this shine to it and so uh it makes me feel like i can like when i start to relate back to the 90s i can start to relate to it through that lens as well which is i think uh it's a kind of a fascinating psychological experiment totally. yeah i agree and it was very much like as as um evan was saying like our our set decorators the the set department the like the construction department like every thought that went into the, the decorating and the way that they put these rooms together was just phenomenal. I mean, like 
Uh, per, I, and I love teen cat's room to look into it and mm -hmm. to see, like, like Evan was saying, it's like you pan across the wall and you see like, even just the posters that she had mm -hmm. up and, and the little net, you know, like over the bed and, and all that kind of stuff. Like it, it's rings so true to like any of my friends that I had in high school, if I went and slept over at their house and like, I slept in that room. Like I know that room. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, I have to know what has been your guys's favorite part about working together on this show. Go ahead, Kevin. <laughs> you can start. I think, I think like, I don't think I've ever really met anybody that I have the wildest and weirdest things in common with. Um, <laughs> we're, it, it's, it's so bizarre um, that I, I love Evan so much like so so much and we even like kind of came to the conclusion where he calls me oh, again one handed i was holding my computer um he calls me kai and i call and you know i would say ev and so it's like l and cat and ev and kai and i was like mm, so sweet. Oh. no we laugh we laugh um actually we get in trouble because we laugh too much sometimes yeah um but uh, he's like ratchet effect a fantastic scene partner um i felt safe with him um comfortable with him uh just in a way that like i greatly greatly appreciate his insight and his artistry um and we did we took some really big risks together ones that you'll see you know even just towards the end of the the season yeah. some really big risks and i never felt like you know, anything in any way, shape or form was forced or in, you know, not genuine. Like it's, I, I kind of like that guy. <laughs> oh, you're gonna make me cry. Oh, I, uh, I not, okay, now it's my turn, now it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I remember after our very first uh, day of shooting, uh, we texted each other afterwards and we were both like all caps. That was so much fun. Like we, we just had, so, we just had so much fun together that the, the chemistry is so natural and, and unforced that, and there's no, there's no way you can predict that. And there's no way that you can uh, kind of finagle that. It's something that just has to happen. You just have to luck out. And I have felt so lucky the entire season working with Kyler and uh, not only like <laughs> Elliot is sort of a, a uh, kind of a constant in a way, like he changes, but he's pretty constant. Whereas Cat is having this roller coaster experience, and the way that Kyler uh, demarcates each specific point along that roller coaster with such a, I don't know, like such a passion and and commitment is, uh, I mean, it's just been beautiful to watch. Oh. And I know the audience are the audiences are gonna love her and and fall and put themselves in her shoes and uh, like. I, it, it, I don't think it's uh, it's superfluous to say that uh, that the show is the way that it is because of what Kyler is doing. Like Kyler is a, I mean, you're killing it. You could not I'm just, I just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm now I, I'm losing my words, but I, I, I just, I just feel grateful from from the very start. And and we we also had so much in common because we we lived completely different lives, grew up in different countries, but uh, we're so close to the same age that all of our um, cultural references and all of our turns of phrase and little inside jokes and uh, unspoken things, they all land. So I immediately felt like I had like a, like a, a best friend in best Kyler. Friend, like yeah. I, and, and, it, and, and so when that gets to line up with what's happening on the screen, Mm -hmm. uh it's a, it's just a joy to get to be able to act those kind of stories yeah, yeah. i love yeah. this friendship <laughs> not so hard he makes me happy he's yeah. always so he'd show up on set and literally everybody like lights up because evan's there it's Come just the on. truth i mean like everybody cast and crew so yeah he got he got a lot of running hugs particularly from me just saying <laughs> hi in the morning that That's and our true. coffee order that's which true, which okay. just like happened to be the exact same coffee order, which is I've never seen anybody have that order. Anybody. What's the order? Well, it's our Starbucks drink. And it's so funny because I know the only difference is I get a triple and you get a double. Because I I, I would die. Like I, I would <laughs> I would have a hummingbird heartbeat 
and then <laughs> I would I would expire. But so but yeah, it's so it's dirty a, latte. It's a, yeah, triple, dirty chai latte. triple chai latte. Oat milk, oh. dirty chai. Wait, I do oat milk chais too. That's my go-to. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah. gets two shots of espresso. I get three. Yeah. And so it's yeah. A lot. But you yeah. gotta make sense for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you have to tell me more because I know Evan touched on this earlier, but what's it been like working with the legend that is Andy McDowell? She is just full of so much like she's a graceful woman. Like she's there's she's so um she's so funny. Um like wild. Like she's just wild and free and funny and enormously talented. Um, but she's like, I, I learned so much from her, just from her being on set and who she is. Um, we had some really wonderful conversations um, just about life and, and family and kids and things like that. Um, that, you know, she's incredibly inspiring just to see somebody who creatively can let themselves go like with ease um because sometimes I'll, like watching the episodes i'll just see her as dell and go god some of those moments are so wildly different between her like who she is like just andy that you're kind of like she's amazing you know and and obviously that's the point of, of what we do but at the same time like she does it with such ease yeah um and um, she's just a genuine, genuine soul, you know? Yeah. She's yeah. so disarming, too. Like, she spent so much of her life in the public eye yeah. that I think she, she, she sees through a lot of the, a lot of the glitter and the, all the mm -hmm. hoopla that sometimes is in show business. And so she's very self-effacing and just kind of wants to get to it. And she calls it how she sees it. And uh, she, she has an open heart for everyone. And I'm especially... Like it, it's especially beautiful to watch her and Sadie because yeah. uh, like alternative, oh like alternately Sadie is brand new. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's very well trained. She went to national theater school up in Canada, which I happen to know is a very difficult program. Uh, so she came out like with, with chops, but she's new to the whole, right. the, new to the show, yes. new, to the, yeah. new to the business. And the way that Andy just holds her, she doesn't carry her. She lets Sadie, kind of stand on her own and, and she's very capable of doing that but she 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 has just such a a beautiful manner with her that um again it's just kismet that they get to play grandmother and granddaughter it's just like yeah. so much of that is art imitating life that the yeah. show gets to benefit from putting in front of the camera yeah that's perfect yeah i love that well without giving any spoilers away do you have a favorite scene or a great behind the scenes story that you can share from filming together? Um, well, <laughs> well, I just I really don't, I don't want to spoil anything. Go, go ahead, go. Or, <laughs> I wanted to tell the story of Bugs, but I don't know if we should do that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. We do have some really, really beautiful, intense moments um, mm -hmm. coming up that we'd have to talk about later okay yeah. um but uh yeah i don't know do you have one uh I, well i'm just trying to think of uh, like if there are any uh if there are any like behind the scenes stuff yeah cause I, I have a hard time thinking about <laughs> the fu the future because like every, since it's a time travel show everything is so specific right and yeah. like tiny little things can be spoilers because you know because we don't know so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm. Does it I'm feel like it. gatekeeping like Marvel secrets sometimes? <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have to give some teases for what's to come in Sunday's new episode. What's the relationship between present day Elliot and present day Brady like? Well, Brady shows up at the end of episode four and uh, played beautifully by Al McAdam. And we, we get a chance to see a little bit more of what's behind Brady and why he is the frustrating way he is. And uh, I, we see also in episode four the way that teen Brady treated teen Elliot. And things mm -hmm. kind of never really changed, except for now they're adults. And especially Elliot, who I think swallowed everything as a kid 
Now yes. he is a self-respecting adult. And so there are some sparks that fly. And it, as an actor, it was some of the most fun I've ever had um, getting to just butt heads with a, a with, with another actor <laughs> all in the in the guise of polite society because because the girl's right there. She's right there. So it, it was yeah. really nice to sort of uh, um, to get into it but, but you know, not 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 getting into anything. You know, there's nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, we had a we had a lot of liberty to be able to um even improv some really great moments in the oh. scenes that just made it like um watch watching the two of them together was so much fun because it's so snarky, but like at the same time it's just delightful. Um and so yeah, um we we had a lot of fun being able to just Play around with these moments and um, and you know kind of uh, explore a bit and and get to learn a lot more about each other. <laughs> I love that. Well, how is Alice going to handle seeing her dad now that she's met him as a teen? It's kind of a tough pill to swallow for her, you know. I mean, because she loves her dad obviously so so much, and it's been so difficult just the you know, the dynamic between Kat and Brady and, you know, breaking up, being apart now, she's in a whole different place. Now she's getting this idea of, you know, who dad was, which was so completely opposite of what she was thinking. You know, she's now kind of getting to this point where because she's with teen Kat so much, she's gotten really protective yeah. um, in a lot of ways of, of teen Kat. And so she's kind of looking at it going like genuinely, like this guy is like a jerk. Like, what are you doing with him? Why is this <laughs> happening? But then it's kind of like, would be like a back to the future moment. Like, would she get erased from the pictures? You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely um, something that she has to come to grips with for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, we know that there's a school dance in present day with a 90s theme. What was it like for you guys to see all those kids dressed in 90s garb? It was <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> everybody got to have a, a really a really good time with it. Um, and uh, personally, um, my daughters got to make a little appearance oh. in the episode. Um, so cute. Snuck him in there cool. in full '90s garb, um, <laughs> and so I won't say anything. I'm just gonna let them be in it. Just know that my two daughters are there. Look out for them. Uh, <laughs> so that was so much fun, um, and for them too. And you know, it was their first time doing something like that. So that seeing them so excited, putting on their costumes and whatnot, mm. was just like it. It was awesome. <laughs> it was so much fun. It, and it's so cool to see. Also, I I, I don't think the uh, the producers knew that uh, Kyler had teenage daughters when they cast her, oh. and so just the, the I'm not, did they know? I'm not sure. Uh, not until after we got like into conversations, yeah. Yeah, and so so just the the very fact of Kyler having all of this lifetime of experience to draw from when relating to Alice, it was really cool. Another art imitates life moment when I got to witness Kyler with her own teenage daughters uh it, that was, it was really cool and i really liked the the dance sequence um there was a, a a choice that the costumers let me make that uh that oh um, your jacket I, I, yeah yeah basically I, you know elliot yeah. it's not really a dress up kind of guy and so i was i was thinking you know how, how am i going to tell his story through the through you know we're trying to tell the story through every way possible and so i had them make my uh, suit jacket uh, too short in the arms <laughs> and so so Elliot's just always trying to 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 fix it and uh, I don't know how much of it made it into the cut but I know I definitely was I was fixing all day <laughs> all day well did, so excited. Hear, well did you guys hear any of the kids talking about the styles of Tina's scenes um well, I mean, all I was listening to was my daughters. So <laughs> it's just like, mom, can I keep this outfit? And yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. Well, well there's, a, there's yeah. this thing, like a retro thing with Gen Z. They really love to kind of pull yeah. and mix, mix and mash and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because it's all postmodern. Whereas like when we were in the 90s, we would sort of dress in this style. Whereas now they're like, 
this style from this era and these they're from this area and it's just sort of I like it's, it's it's like a like a picasso painting so i think the uh <laughs> I, I was watching all those kids and i could see them like they were like mixing and matching in their heads and they're like i'm gonna take this i'm gonna take that and take that but i, I don't know like butter clips oh. butterfly clips might come oh, back yeah, butterfly as a result clips. of this oh, show and okay. katam had those overalls with the one that was down yeah. you know so he had the one that was clicked on and the other one was off yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but well, they're, they're so much cooler than we are like those 100%. The, the, the gen z cast uh we're just trying to catch up to them yeah exactly <laughs> Well, speaking of the fashion, Kat wears some pretty terrific jackets. Kyler, did you have a favorite one? And were there any you tried to keep? All of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were some pretty fantastic jackets. There's actually um, a coat that comes up in um, not episode 9 and 10 that I genuinely tried my hardest just, just short of actually stealing it. Um, that was this it's this beautiful kind of like dark plaid wool coat mm. um that like has this it, it's hard to explain when you watch nine and ten okay <laughs> you'll see me getting in and out of the water can i say that uh that was another thing like wardrobe was such a huge part of you know i know for sadie and for myself because we do go through the pond you know so many times trying to go back and solve problems and whatnot the wardrobe is actually a really big deal um, because you're trying to think about realistically, if you know that you're going to jump into a pond, are you going to wear like, you know, wear a white t-shirt? You know what I mean? Like, are you nope. going <laughs> to, you know, there's, there were certain things that we had to really keep track of. And also the fact that it's Toronto and it's getting colder and <laughs> we wet and wet outside, you know, at night. So we had, you know, people from the wardrobe department that we're constantly being, oh, Peter, that we're constantly giving like, you know, the water, hot water bottles and like coming over and spraying us down and everybody's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And you're like, you know what? Yeah. Let's, we just got to do what we got to do. I mean, like for, yeah. for about ha half the season, you guys were just shivering standing outside yeah. as they just took spray bottles to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I know the, the, yeah. the producers, I, I, I heard them at one point, uh, probably about a, a thousand points. They were like, why didn't we use like a, a phone booth or something. I'm like, why yeah, yeah, yeah. use it? <laughs> some other time travel mechanism? But the, the fact that it's a pond, I think is beautiful, yeah. beautifully poetic. And uh, it's also one of the most exciting things about the show for me is that the pond is an unreliable mechanism. Yes. That, you know, uh, the, the fact that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you come, go in right, come in and come out right away. Sometimes there's a passage in time. There's so much uh, latitude for storytelling within that. And so now that we've created in these uh, colorful characters and created the relationships, I think sky's the limit now for where the story can go. Yeah. Well, lastly, without giving too much away, can you each tease a scene you're most excited for people to see this season? Yeah, I, know. I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> there's some, yeah, there's, there's some pretty heavy duty stuff coming up. Um, okay. I, I, I know kind of, again, speak like speaking from a personal standpoint, um, uh, with Evan, um, and, and with Sadie in different particular times and actually in a couple scenes where it's all three of us together. Um, I, again, I'm, I'm particularly grateful because, you know, from, I really took a lot, a lot of risks. And so I really try to push myself in a lot of ways. And, and sometimes like when you're so used to being in this business and you get so, um, I don't know, used to kind of criticizing the way that you look or criticizing yourself or like, you know, I, I speak from, you know, as a woman and I've been in this business for a really long time. And so you just get concerned. Is this a good angle? Is this not a good angle? Do these clothes, you know, look right on me or whatever you become so aware and so conscious of that, that, you know, I, I really took, you know, a, a big leap and just thought, you know what, this is a moment, this is an opportunity for me, especially, you know, if, if I have any opportunity to speak something like this to, to anybody, it's not just, you know, it's not gender specific, but um, about letting that kind of go, letting that idea go. 
and knowing that if I'm sobbing in a scene, you know, and my eyes are like almost swollen shut or whatever, it's like, who cares? Because it's, it's really a matter of, of, yeah, just trusting the process and trusting those that are in the scene with you and just saying, you know what, it's, it's, it's about quality yeah. and it's about um, freedom. And if that can, you know, help inspire people in any way, shape or form without that sounding, hopefully not like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but um, <laughs> being able to trust the people that we're with. So yeah. it did allow us to take some really big strides and some big emotional leaps and um, yeah, some fun ones still, but, but definitely some, some emotional ones for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for the, the, the journey for audiences to be able to follow this journey. I think one of the things that yeah. makes this show different, especially for Hallmark is that it, uh, it investigates loss yeah. uh, as opposed to being something that one is trying to avoid or something that one is trying to uh, synthesize so they can get over it. Uh, the mm -hmm. way home approaches loss uh, as a puzzle and we yeah. investigate it and we engage with it. And especially with this, uh, the, the time travel mechanism, we can see it from all sides. And so as we open up this puzzle, we get to see the intricacies inside and, and the payoff for the, the loss that is engaged with and investigated is that the healing that then can come from that is a, uh, it's a whole level of magnitude, more, uh, more touching and more, uh, uh, more real. And I think audiences uh, are not going to be expecting uh, the type of feelings that they're going to have. And I don't think they're good. I don't think they're ready. But I think they're going to be glad because uh, uh, I, I know the heart and soul of this show comes at the, at the basis level from the intention. And I know the intention is to to heal and to investigate and to really have a generative relationship with loss and the sort of the, the interplay between losing and winning that makes up our real lives. Yeah. What, what Evan said. Perfectly too. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. He's so well, smart. Well, he's so funny. He's so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> and that's like, so cool. Cool. <laughs> but well, also, you know, the other thing too that I'm really excited about is figuring out the whole white witch story. Yeah. Ooh. What that means. Ooh. Who remembers of that? Who remembers all about that way back? Well, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, guys, this was so much fun. <laughs> Well, thank thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Tune in for new episodes of The Way Home Sundays at 9, 8 central, only on Hallmark Channel. And don't forget to tweet along while you watch and use the hashtag The Way Home. Yay. Hey. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>